the Joe Rogan experience. I had to make that decision this year. I, I found out I'm not a psychopath. It was very reassuring. Yeah, you told me about that story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that was, it, it, I don't know. To be honest, I, it, I'll tell the story but, uh, before I forget the thought. It was everything else associated with what happened after that I found more impactful and, um, you know, the stuff that lasted or stays with you. It mm -hmm. wasn't what actually happened. It was seeing the aftermath and like the system and how it all yeah. pans out. Um, but yeah, we had a, we had two home invasions within 36 hours, I guess. Uh, the first time the guy came in in the middle of the night, about two thirty, three 3 a.m., and our back door had this sensor on it, made a very signature noise. And if you live in your house, you know the noises in your house. And for whatever reason, it just woke me up from a dead sleep. And I knew what I heard, and there's the only thing that would make that noise. So uh, I kind of snaked my way out the hall and down to the top of the stairs. And when I hit the top of the stairs, I heard the, the dog growl, and the door closed back. So I knew that was somebody leaving. We have a huge fucking dog. Um basically useless but he did growl and he made a very primitive noise i was proud of him and uh <laughs> the guy didn't come in because of that and i just went downstairs and kind of swept the ground floor and then he was gone um i didn't want to freak my wife out so i waited till the morning to tell her and then we called the police of course one of the neighbors got it on like a ring cam uh. in the back alley the guy leaving and going down the street so i had a very clear view of him and uh so for whatever reason my wife and the kids they had to go on down to where we actually live i was working that week in nashville probably mixing a record or something so i just stay behind and uh as a result of me being home alone that day i was cleaning and working on a a firearm i'd recently purchased and assembled and uh so went to bed that night locked everything up and you know because they weren't home i put the gun on the floor on a padded case next to the bed so i'm letting the next morning it's like 7 15 a.m like sun shining neighbors going to work i hear the back door open again and i was like this can't you know what the fuck is that like the maid who would be here that early and i guess out of paranoia or whatever reason i grabbed that gun and just went to the top of the stairs to look i still think it's the maid and when i hit the top of the stairs and looked down the staircase same guy same clothes just standing in my living room rolling the cord up on my headphones and uh, I was like, well, all right. I was almost impressed. One that he came back, but it was just like, I couldn't believe it was happening at this time. And uh, so I started down the stairs on him very quietly. And I, th I got about halfway down by the time he like turned and saw me. And I was looking through his, at his fucking head through a red dot, like a video game. I'll never forget that image of this guy, like probably thinking he's about to die. And, uh, the back door was thankfully still open. The only thing I said to him was, what are we doing here, man? And I hit him with a strobe, which kind of like, probably he, to his brain, was he thought was the gun going off because he kind of like seizured. And then I saw the adrenaline spike. Uh, and he turned and went out the back door and jumped clean off my fucking porch, like never hit a single step and ran at the back gate. He had latched it. And I saw this on the video later. When he came in, he shut the back gate back. So he hit that back gate on a dead rant, on a dead run, and just like blew it to hell. Latches and wood splinters flying, and then like took off down the alley. And I was just, I'm still, I'm standing on my porch with a fucking, you know, yeah, looking like a jackass. And, and my, like my neighbors are literally walking out of the house, going to work and shit. I'm just like, okay, that happened. And then, uh, so then the next thing, there's like eight police officers in my living room. All they wanted to see was my gun. And every single one of them asked me why I didn't shoot the guy, and uh, which I found very interesting. I was like, well, I mean, and I thought about it, finally. You would, well, one, when I'm down, going down the stairs, you would not believe how much shit can go through your head in like four seconds. Like there, I, I had this whole conversation with myself as to like, wife and kids aren't here. I, you know, this guy doesn't even know I'm here yet. I'm holding a fucking assault rifle and he's not a threat to me but if i put one through his dome which i have every legal right to do right now there's going to be news vans on my lawn this is going to be on your fucking wikipedia page <laughs> like, you know what i mean like all of that i'm just like this guy is not a threat yeah 
Um, and thankfully, he chose to go out the door. But all those, it was just so weird. They were like, "Why didn't you shoot him?" I was like, "Well," and I said that, and they just kind of looked at me, and uh, and I was like, and "By the, you know, literally by the time we engage, man, two seconds later, he's running out the door." So, well, I'm going to shoot him in the back, and then you put me in prison. And they were like, "Ah, fuck, man, twice in a week, you'd been fine. We figured something out. Figured something out." And uh, who wants to take that chance? Oh yeah, yeah, with a uh, life in prison or not. Right. Yeah, roll the dice. I mean, if he'd have turned and ran at me, we'd probably be having a different conversation. But yes. He, but he didn't, right. you know. Um, or if he reached for a gun. Anything. Yeah. Which he didn't. Yeah. Um, Was he a junkie? No. No, he's like 25. I, honestly, I saw his whole fucking life on his face. You know what I mean? It just like probably hard times. Just a mess. Punk kid, probably like yeah. I was. I didn't do any shit like that when I was his age. But um, no, his tox college came back clean. He had like one prior for possession. Um, it was hard times, desperate. And uh, so I, I got subpoenaed because I was the only one that actually met him. And I go to the court case. And, you know, it that was a very interesting and telling experience for me because I'd never really been to anything like that. And he was one of maybe eight or nine other people on the docket that day, all uh, assigned the same public defender who literally shows up 15 minutes before they start the day to familiarize himself with every single case. And you just saw this factory, like these young underprivileged black males just getting pumped into the system the da came over and she was just like thanks for being here yada yada and um uh, you know there were um, unluckily for him he broke into like 13 other houses and they had him on tape and a lot of things so we had 13 or 14 aggravated burglary charges which is pretty fucking heavy you know it's a, every one of those Jeez. is like a class b so he was looking at 12 to 15 uh, i think he sang like a bird pleaded down got six and then if he does a successful rehabilitation program in prison he could be out in two and and she was like yada yada and uh i just realized like wow they're just just throwing this kid's life away because he you know granted he came into some people's houses and he probably and he almost got fucking killed and they caught him the next night like three streets over in the act doing the same thing but he had no priors he wasn't on drugs it was just like no direction probably no discipline no guidance no <sighs> heroes and I, I struggled with that. I was like, man, there's got to be like, what if I gave him a job? It depends entirely on who he is. Right. Which I never got the chance to sit down and find that find that out. I never got to talk to him face to face. It might turn out awesome. Because he was just some punk fucking kid. I'd be like, good luck, man. You know, yeah, I mean, like, it might turn out awesome. It might turn out terrible. It's depending upon the person. But mm -hmm. there's so many people in this country that are set up to fail. <laughs>